All right, everyone, welcome back. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more today about not crowding your cover, okay? Uh, and I already did a short version of this. I find that the short versions uh, get a lot more circulation, but uh, for my regulars on this channel, we're gonna go into a little bit more detail for you guys, okay? So the idea of not crowding your cover is that if this is a piece of cover here, I, I don't wanna be like here, right, shooting. I don't wanna take the gun out, right, and be here and shooting this so that I'm so close to my cover or even past my cover. The reason is because there might be somebody on the other side of your cover that can grab your gun. And the other thing is that if you miss and you hit your cover, you can get pieces of wood or sheetrock or other garbage uh, in your face, okay? Um, so that's why you wanna be far enough back from your cover. So uh, let's demonstrate that. So if this is my cover over here, Right, I wanna be, uh, right now I'm about three feet back, okay? So I'm gonna, I need to transition to this side over here. Right. Then I'm gonna cover the gun up, right? I'm gonna come here so you guys can see me better. I'm gonna cover the gun up and then do my scan and assess and then quickly reholster the gun, okay? Let's, let's break that down. The covering the gun up because other people that might be observing or coming onto the scene, they don't know who you are, what happened. All they see is a guy bleeding on the ground over there and you holding a gun, okay? So that's why you got to cover the gun up as soon as possible. You want to do that scan assess. The purpose of the scan assess is not just to see if there's any additional threats, okay? Uh, a lot of people focus on that part of it. The, the part of the reason why we drill the scan and assess is we need to break tunnel vision, right? Because the last thing that we want is this, right? I, I get behind my cover, right? I take that shot and then I freeze. Okay, I'm gonna get shot like this, okay? So I need a mechanism, okay, to kickstart my brain into thinking what I need to do next, okay? And this is something that we just, we need to drill. So that mechanism is after I shoot, right? I'm gonna cover the gun up and scan and assess because that scan and assess breaks tunnel vision. It forces me to look at other things, which now allows, frees up my brain to start thinking about, okay, what do I gotta do next, okay? So if you're not already behind cover, get behind cover, okay? Make sure that gun is in the holster as soon as possible. And again, scan and assess, gun goes back in the holster. Those two things go together, okay? Because that's, again, the scan assess is going to remind you to get the gun back in the holster, not freeze holding the gun out in the open. So gun gas gets, goes back in the holster. If you're not behind cover, you get behind cover, okay? Next thing you're starting to think of is, let's call 911. Let's get that call in there uh, and make, make police aware that you're the victim, okay? We're not going to get into a long conversation with 911 because everything's being recorded. You're just going to establish that you're the victim. Uh, this is your location. This is what you're wearing. And you're, you know, you had to defend yourself and you're waiting for police, okay, to arrive. Okay. And, and, you know, so that's what we want to establish with 911. The next thing that we want to become aware of, right, is any, any witnesses and any evidence. Okay. So if this guy had a gun or a knife or whatever, we want to make sure that that knife doesn't move or that gun doesn't move. And if it does move, right, let's say somebody goes to take it, we have to be able to make a report to the police and say, hey, this person wearing this came and took that knife, came and took that gun. You know, because a lot of times people will say, hey, that, don't talk to the police, don't tell them anything. There are certain things that you need to tell the police, right? If the, if the evidence was moved, police need to be made aware of it. Uh, now, uh, one example might be your shell cases, right? Um, the shell cases are an indication of how far, right, cell cases coming out of your gun, are an indication of how far you are from the threat. So if you've got the wind blowing them all over the place, or 911 coming out to the scene and, and kicking them all over the place, you need to make police aware that, that these shell cases from here were kicked all the way down there, or all the way down there, or the wind moved them. Again, that's something, that's something that you gotta make police aware that has to go on the police report, okay? Uh, witnesses, right? Any witnesses on the scene? You can't talk to the police, but you can say, hey, that person was there, that person was watching, that person was watching. Um, you want to make them aware of the witnesses. Now, if you have the opportunity, you can create witnesses, right? So if, for example, I see a situation that's escalating, right? 
I would tell him, hey, get back. I don't want to talk to you. Stop. You're scaring me. Get away. One of the things that that does is it draws other people's eyes and attention to your situation, right? Because ideally, you don't, wanna, you don't want witnesses to hear a bang, right? And then see you holding a gun, pointing it at this guy that's bleeding on the ground. You want them to see that this person was trying to attack you. So by you warning that person to get away from you, to stop threatening you, uh, and again, you're not going to say get away from me or I'm going to shoot you because that can be threatening, okay? Uh, you're just going to tell him, get away from me. I don't want to talk to you. Stop. You're scaring me. That's, he, he may not listen to you, but other people are going to listen to you, and they're going to become aware that, hey, that person is the aggressor, okay? So you want to create witnesses whenever possible, okay? So get the gun back in the holster. Call 911. Um, pay attention to the evidence. Make sure that doesn't move. Uh, Pay attention to the witnesses, okay? Hopefully witnesses that you've created by bringing attention to the situation. Make police aware of who these witnesses are, okay? Uh, and lastly, get your lawyer on the phone, okay? The last thing you want to do is get into a self-defense type of situation and then start looking for a lawyer because what's going to happen is you're going to be in a jail cell uh, or, or, yeah, and they're going to be calling up your wife or your mother or whoever, and you're going to say, hey, listen, I need you to go find me a lawyer. You're going to completely overwhelm them. And, and what's going to happen is if they do go to a lawyer, the lawyer is going to ask for like two, $3,000 up front just to look at your case. Okay. So if you're, especially if you're a concealed carrier, you got to have that all sorted out in advance. Okay. What you want to do, right, is you want to have your prepaid legal service, right? You got to have your lawyer already set up. And you want to call up your wife or your mother or your girlfriend or whatever and say, hey, go to this draw. And you're going to find, uh, you know, my card, the card of my lawyer with the phone number. Call them up and tell them I'm at this station, whatever, you know, I'm at this location. And I need, I need them to, you know, basically call the police and, and, and deal with this problem, okay? That's the ideal situation that you want, okay? You want to tell them that, hey, this, this is my lawyer, this is the phone number. Call them up, get them. Because it's really important because in a situation like that, you're most likely only going to remember your wife's or your mother's phone number. Uh, especially with cell phones today, right? Who remembers any number? So there's probably only two or three phone numbers that you remember. So whoever those those two or three phone numbers are, that's the person that you want to direct uh, to your to your lawyer, right? And get them on the phone uh, because remember, if they arrest you, especially, they're gonna take your wallet, they're gonna take your phone. You're not gonna have access to any of that stuff, okay? So it will take you hours, maybe days, for you to get in touch with your lawyer, right? So whatever phone number you know. That's the person that you want to direct to call your lawyer. Um, so the, the legal service that I use is U.S. Law Shield. Um, for the reason I use them because they're cheap, right? U.S. Law Shield, they're only $11 per month. And then with this promo code over here, right, Pocono, pro, promo code Pocono Shooting, uh, you get freebies, right? You even get one month off, one month free, two months free, uh, or they'll waive a $20 sign-up fee. Um, in some, it depends on your state. In some states... You get like the first two months free, basically. Um, so it's only eleven dollars a month. It, it almost doesn't make sense if you're a concealed carrier not to have a prepaid legal service, okay? Um, and pretty much everybody knows at this point that you get that not to talk to the police, right? If you're a concealed carrier, you should know not to talk to the police. By now, you should know that it is illegal for the police to lie to you without limit, okay? They can tell you that they have ten witnesses. That show you start the whole thing, right? They can say that they got cameras that show you instigating the fight. Okay, it's already been 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 um, determined by the Supreme Court that it is legal for the police to lie to you without limit. They call it the deceptive interrogation. So the two scariest things that you will ever hear from police is uh, that they're there to help you. They don't think that that you did anything. Um, you know, you know, just just talk to them and sign this paper over here that signs your rights away. Okay, don't do that. It is illegal for police to lie to you without limit. Okay, so thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all soon.